Tick tock, tick tock, it's time once again to talk about ticks. That's right, it's the fourth annual tick tock conversation about Lyme. It's at Dickinson College and we've got all the details. And this is, is Chick, Chick to Chick. Chick. All right, here we are. It's the end of March. Winter's just about over. And people tend to think that this is the time of year when ticks start to come out. But actually, they can survive through the winter months, and people don't realize that. Exactly. See, I taught you well. You did, you and did I listen. You did a fine job. When you chirp, I listen. Once in a while. It works, <laughs> folks. Here's the thing. We're talking about ticks. We're talking about Lyme disease. It's not going away. No. And you're right, Flora. People usually don't feel that they have to worry about ticks during the winter time, in the winter months. They really just have to worry about it kind of starting now. Yes. The weather is warming. It's the nymph tick that you really can't see. That's well and good. But unfortunately, ticks have been out. People may have been bitten um, during the winter months. I'm certain they have been. They just might not know um, that they have Lyme. And of course, we want people to understand that we're going into the season that's major tick season now. Yeah, you really have to take precautions. You really have to be concerned. Again, Pennsylvania continues, continues to lead the nation with the highest number of Lyme disease cases across the country. And again, I am still baffled by the fact that we don't have a really good treatment or a cure for Lyme disease. Now, this is something that I don't quite understand, and maybe you can fill us in on this. There's a vaccine, there's mm -hmm. a Lyme vaccine for pets to prevent Lyme disease in pets, but there isn't anything like that for people. So what's up with that? Well, there was one several years ago, about 15, 16 years ago, and it was quickly taken off the market. Some people would say it's because they were actually injured by the vaccine. Others would say there just wasn't enough profit. I'm not really sure which is the right answer. But what I do know is that they are working on another one. And most people that I have talked to, so these are doctors and scientists who are really in the trenches, because ultimately we want something that's gonna protect human beings. But as far as we can tell right now, I don't think we're there yet. And I don't have the entire answer as mm -hmm. to why they only have something for pets and they don't have them for humans yet. Um, but what I can say is that if you are worried about your dog getting bitten by a tick, mm -hmm. just know this, even if the tick does bite them, they've come in the house, the tick bites them and their dog or their cat isn't going to get sick. The tick still made it into the house and that's a big concern because you aren't protected. That's a big thing that people don't really appreciate. So it's not that we want to protect the animal from actually um, getting really sick, but we also want to make sure when our pets come in our house, we put a preventative on them there's permethrin, there's other sprays, there's guards, so they just don't even enter our houses. So that's a big thing I just wanted to say. You can prevent that on your animals. You don't want them bringing in the house. And the other thing that we need to emphasize, and I'm not certain that a lot of people know about this, that if you find a tick on your pet, or if you find a tick on yourself, there is a proper way to get the tick off of you, and then, and then you can send it to a lab to get it tested to see if that tick has Lyme disease. Or other co-infections, which right. is the big deal. Yes, exactly. So basically, there's one right way to remove a tick, and that's to use a pointed tweezer, get right at the head of the tick, right where your skin is or the animal's skin is, and pull straight up. That's it. You never twist, you never put in oil, you never burn it. It only aggravates the tick. Just pull straight up. Now, if the head is embedded, you can go to the doctor so the doctor can remove it. But this is the important part, and this is what you were talking about, getting it tested. Yeah. So make sure that you put the tick in a baggie. If you have to go to the doctor's office, make sure that baggie goes along. And then I want you to go on to ticklab.org. Org. That's right here in Pennsylvania, it's free tick testing. They're gonna test your tick. It's a turnaround of like maybe two days, three yep. days. And that is gonna be a great way of finding out whether your tick is carrying any diseases at all. That's a great uh, form, I think, of reassurance. I, sure. You know, my son found a tick on his dog, mm -hmm. and we immediately sent it off to the lab, and it came back negative. So it was just like, whew, 
it actually gives you some reassurance. And in terms of what's new on the Lime, on lime Frontier, mm -hmm. what is the latest out there? What's going on in the Lime world? So one of the things they're really focusing on are different treatments. You know, there are people out there who just don't respond to antibiotics or they can't be on antibiotics for a long period of time. They're really looking for ways that medications and treatments aren't going to disrupt the gut. You know, mm -hmm. the gut is like the core of our well-being. And oftentimes when we've had to have long-term antibiotics, it creates a problem. So there are a lot of doctors and scientists who are working really hard, you know, to make sure that there are better treatments and um, maybe better medications on the market to help people out. That's one big thing that's going on. Right here in Pennsylvania, we are really working hard to make sure that people that do need a longer dose of antibiotics, that it's covered by insurance. Think about it. It used to just be 30 days. Mm -hmm. My daughter went 18 months. Yeah, some I mean, people need longer than that. Yeah, exactly. And it also allows the doctor and the patient to have the conversation and not be dictated by insurance. So the state of Pennsylvania is really doing a lot to forward that. Baby steps. It's baby always steps, baby steps. Little steps exactly. along the way. And something important is coming up. Your baby. My baby. Your baby. TikTok. Yeah. The fourth annual TikTok is coming yeah. up on April 4th. So fill us in what's going to be happening that day. So I always strive to bring something new to the table. This is year number four, which I can't even believe that we have the fourth year coming up. And I like to make sure that it's a conversation that kind of connects the dots on a lot of levels. So we were just talking about pets. Mm -hmm. So we have um, Andy or Andy. Andrew Nupp, rather. Andrew Nupp is with IDEX. He's also a Dickinson grad, but the company that he has is a diagnostics for vets. So you can send in a tick to this um, company and it's all over the country. And they really look at data points that we need to understand what these ticks are infected with. Then we have a woman who's amazing. She is um, a Stanford medical school journalist. She wrote the book Bitten. Her name is Chris Newby. And she is coming to talk with us about some of the uh, controversy around the medical community and the government and what is going on there. Maybe a conspiracy theory too. Exactly. There's Maybe. all of that going on. Yep. Then we have Dr. Neil Spector who is coming back. He's phenomenal because he's actually an oncologist, but he was bitten by a tick and he nearly died because he had Lyme carditis. We also have a doctor out of Johns Hopkins. His name is Dr. Ying Zhang, and he has some great new studies that he's going to be showing. Locally here, we have Turnpaw Health and Wellness, uh, Dr. Shannon Smith. So again, all of these folks sort of round out the conversation about what's going on, how we protect ourselves, and what's in the pipeline for treatments. Interesting point that you brought up, Lyme carditis. I don't think that people realize that Lyme can be deadly. Oh, yeah. It can it, it attack the heart, uh -huh. it enlarges the heart, and it can be deadly. And that is Lyme carditis that you're talking about. Yeah. I don't think people realize that. I don't think people really understand that a spirochete, um, which is basically when, it, when a tick infects you and you've got this spirochete running through your body, it likes cartilage. It likes meninges, so that is your brain and in your heart. Mm -hmm. And it hangs out there. And so there are people who have a lot of neurological issues. They think maybe they have dementia or Alzheimer's. Chris Christopherson, the singer. Yeah. So they diagnosed him, and well within the range of thinking he could have it, because he was in his, um, I think it was late 70s, diagnosed him with Alzheimer's. It wasn't. He had Lyme disease. He had Lyme. Yeah. And as soon as they got him back on the road to wellness... He'd recovered, I and mean, that's a tremendous story. Um, you talk about with the Lyme carditis, um, Dr. Spector, a case in point, once they realized what was going on with him, they tried the best that they could, but his heart just failed so miserably, he needed a heart transplant. Um, then there are other people who their joints are so um, mm -hmm. infected and it breaks down the cartilage to the point they have to have some replacements in knees and elbows all over, young people, older people. So it's something that we have to keep talking about. It is almost like an enigma in that everybody is unique when they're bitten on how they're going to respond. And I know I digress and I go off on a tangent. I'm passionate about it. And I just want people to stay safe. All right. April 4th, mm -hmm. fourth annual TikTok. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can catch us all over social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, IGTV. We're all over the place. Yep. You can also subscribe to the Chick to Chick YouTube channel. That way, every Monday, Lucky you're going to you. get this boop, little alert. <laughs> new podcast. We're here. <laughs> and you know what? Stick around for lots more that we're going to chirp about. But until then, we chirp about another topic. Have a great week. Thank you.